Good morning, LA Chem. Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning, and we're starting in Judges chapter 16. Judges chapter 16. If you haven't been keeping up with us in the book of Judges, uh, we've been going through different men that show up, and women that show up in the book of Judges. These are people who were used by God. And the thing that I see amazing and repeated is that, you know what, God uses us despite us. We are so frail. We are so messed up. And God still chooses to be faithful, right? He enables us. It's His faithfulness that counts us able to, not our faithfulness. And so when we realize that, when we realize that it's by God's mercy and by God's faithfulness that we can get up in the morning, that we can read our Bible, that we can say hello to mom and dad, get ready for school. When we realize that it's by God's mercy and by God's grace that it's not because we're the greatest and we're the fastest and we're the most strongest and we're the worstest at using English words correctly. It's not about that. It's about what? It's about our obedience to God, our obedience to Christ, our loving Him and realizing He was faithful, how much He loves me, His grace on my life. And that changes us. That changes us uh, from being someone who works to someone that, uh, to, from someone that it is a duty and just this heart, super difficult thing it is to follow the things of God and why is God, uh, and yet it changes when we realize His mercy. It it becomes now a thing of delight. My God, my Savior, all You've done. Who am I? I'm not worthy to even be called Your servant, and You call me Your friend. Lord, I'm humbled and, and I'm grateful and thankful. That is what I've been seeing. And one of the things in the book of Judges that I see, that God uses people even despite themselves. And, and the potential in Samson's life, we know that it's been diminishing and it's been not as effective as it could be had Samson yielded it all to the Lord. And, you know, a lot of times... Things are very slow in the beginning. When you see Jesus' ministry, right? His ministry lasted really three years. Before that, what was it? It was a time of waiting and of preparation and of God uh, ministering and God just doing things in and through Jesus in his heart. And when Jesus now goes into the public ministry, it's a very short time, three years. And so I see that God likes us well done in the slow cooker. He doesn't like just to microwave us and boom, zap, we got it. And, and we're, no, it's a slow process. He makes it good. He makes it well done. And he is faithful and he shows us that in our life. So let's pick up Judges chapter 16. We're only going to read the first three verses because I think that they demonstrate where we then go to in verse 4 tomorrow. So the first three verses, Judges chapter 16, it says, Now Samson went to Gaza. Gaza has been a disputed area ever since then and now in Gaza, right? We hear of the Gaza Strip. But anyways, the Gaza. He saw there a sinful woman. And, and, and he went to go be with this sinful woman. Why would you want to be around a sinful person? Well, because you're giving room to your flesh. Now that reminds me of someone. It reminds me of King David. And we have here, this is, and, and pray for the Spanish translation. This is the Spanish translation room where we do the translation during the church services for those that speak Spanish. And in this little room, they have a Spanish uh, chapter of the Bible, Psalm 23. El Señor es mi pastor. The Lord is our shepherd. And we know what it was for David to learn through life to be led by his good shepherd. David had somewhat of an experience, and he can identify, I think, with Samson, and I hope you can, I hope I can. Why? Because we have a sinful heart that wants to be pulled by different things, but there's there has to be, again, a allowing of God in our life to, he's the one in control, he's the one I follow. I don't want him to follow my lead, I want to follow his lead. He's my good shepherd. This is not the Lord leading. This is Samson's sinful heart. Remember, he's a Nazarite. 
supposed to be set apart for God, supposed to be set apart for the things of God. And yet what happens? He is hanging around with a sinful crowd. The sinful woman. You think this is part of the Nazarite vow? Let's forget the bo dead bones he already touched. He would walk through the vineyards when he's not supposed to even touch grapes and anything of grapes. And so he's supposed to be apart from all those things. And, and in all of those things, his hair, he hasn't cut his hair and he's still holding that one. He still hasn't cut his hair. But he's here in a place and with people he shouldn't be. So a lot of times we might be at church. Maybe we're always around the people of God, right? And that helps us so much. We're protected. We're, we last longer because there's so many people around us. But what if we were on our own and we could choose to be anywhere we want? Where would we go? What things would we say, yes, okay, fine, I'll do that. And what things would we say no to? And here we have Samson, someone who is now further and further hanging out by himself. Remember, we never see anyone being his accountability. Where, where does Samson go when he needs guidance? He's been lasting just because he's riding the wave of his maybe childhood, but he is departing and he is getting into a deep, dark place. Some of you, I don't know where you are and I hope you're not in this place, but I know that God wants to do things in your life. And don't settle for giving in to your flesh. Don't settle for that. But here we have the, the next part. So Samson, when the Gazites were told Samson has come here, they surrounded the place and they lay in wait for him all night at the gate of the city. They were quiet all night saying, in the morning when it is daylight, we will kill him. And so you see the enemy. He promises, here's this good thing. And then when he has you, he tears you apart. That's what he wants. That's what those giving into those evil, sinful pleasures do to us. They tear you apart. From the inside out, they'll start ripping your heart out. Why? Because God wants you to, to be destroyed. He doesn't want you to last. He doesn't want you to be strong. He doesn't want you to wait on him. He wants you to go get what you want to get. It's about what you want, and you forget the rest, and you fall short of the potential that you had for the Lord. I'm so blessed with George this uh, yesterday, Monday, being with us in the LHM Live Chapel. Go back on YouTube and watch it and see uh, see it from start to finish as we have a special guest, a special pastor with us every week. And this week, Monday, it was George. And you can see just George's life and the different things God did in a waiting period, in a humbling period. The way he busted his knee that last year of camp when he thought maybe it was going to be the year where uh, things were going to be exciting and he was going to do all these things. And it was God doing a work in him. And God does that if we allow him to. But if we resist, we get ourselves into these compromising situations. And we start learning to make decisions based on the flesh and not the spirit. And that's where we end, verse 3. Samson lay low till midnight. Then he arose at midnight, took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two gate posts. These are heavy, heavy. This isn't just una, a little gate. This is gate posts of the city. These are gigantic gates. He grabs hold of them. He pulls them out by the bar and everything, carries them on the shoulder to the top of the hill and faces Hebron. And then that's where we'll pick up tomorrow. But here is Samson. Another still, God is still in him, giving him this supernatural strength. Yet, he's resisting God. He's not seeing what God had for him. So, I take a deep breath because I think of people in this situation. I think of people who had so much potential for the things of God. And they... Just have let it go and let it go. But then I can smile and I can jump even with excitement. Why? Because I've seen how God is patient and he's long suffering. And I've seen these people come back to the Lord. And man, I'm praying for them. They lost out on so many years by compromising to their flesh and their sin. But Lord, I pray now and we close with prayer. God, I pray now that you would help every one of the students of LHM, those listening, that we would not depart. Lord, may our testimony be that since I was a kid, I knew about Jesus, I knew God, 
He was my Lord and Savior, and I've never departed from that. May that be the testimony of LHM, the power of God to keep someone away from these compromising choices. Lord, help us to not have to learn, to not have to go through those things. I've seen so many go, and I still haven't seen them back. And so, Lord, I pray for those lost sheep, those that have gotten lost, that have strayed away, that you would bring them back. I pray for our brothers, our sons, our daughters, or maybe our parents, those that are away from you, Lord. God, I pray they would return to you. Thank you for LHM, and I thank you for the amazing people you have there. And I pray, God, you'd strengthen us to follow your spirit, not our flesh, to realize you're faithful and we're not, Lord. It's your faithfulness, your mercy, your grace in my life. Thank you for that. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the time through Judges. I know I am. Stay tuned. One of these days this week, we'll have another uh, Bible story challenge. And hopefully you can turn one in if you haven't done one already. Remember, you uh, just pick a story in the Bible. You can read through it, act through it, and just share, share with us just so we can enjoy uh, a, a story, a moment of history recorded in the Bible. So God bless you all. Have a great day and see you tomorrow, Wednesday. Have a great Tuesday.